Welcome back to the channel SD fans. In a recent video, I spoke about wrecks and the way in which artificial reefs created by purpose sunk shipwrecks are often viewed rather differently to genuine maritime or wartime shipwrecks by some divers. Personally, I like diving any wrecks, purpose sunk or not. But what about man-made objects specifically created for this purpose that are placed on a seabed for divers to enjoy and marine life to colonise? In this video, I'll talk about some of the most successful projects out there and some that have failed dismally. Ships make perfect artificial reefs. They are big, solid hunks of metal, which are soon a thriving habitat for marine life. But as we discussed in a previous video, airplanes, military vehicles, oil rigs, ship carriages, and so on, are also finding new lives beneath the surface around the world. But there is another kind of artificial reef, one which is specifically constructed for that purpose. Perhaps the most famous are the works of Jason Decay's Taylor which are usually placed in locations where there is a lack of natural reef structure. Decay's Taylor's sculptures, often of disturbingly lifelike people, are created using non-toxic, pH-neutral marine-grade cement, which is free from harmful pollutants. The surface of the cement has a rough texture, which encourages coral larvae to attach and thrive, with nooks and crannies in the cubby holes formed in the folds of the sculpted clothing, providing homes for fish and crustaceans. His creations make the perfect base for brand new marine habitat. His first installation was the Ultra Underwater Sculpture Park off the coast of Grenada way back in 2006. When you dive this selection of sculptures now, you can see how they have been designed to become one with nature. In many cases, some of the figures have fallen over or been partially covered by sand. Others are so smothered in coral and sponge growth that the once human figures have taken on an otherworldly appearance. Since this inaugural construction, Decay's Taylor has continued a prolific run of underwater parks and museums around the planet, including in the Bahamas, Mexico, Spain, Indonesia, the UK, Norway, the Maldives, Australia and France. His latest unveiling was the Museum of Underwater Sculpture Ayanapa in Cyprus, which takes the form of an underwater forest being explored by various figures. The Neptune Memorial Reef is another ambitious project, an artistic representation of the lost city of Atlantis. Located off the coast of Miami, it currently covers an area of around an acre, but it's envisioned to cover 16 acres in the future, becoming the largest man-made reef ever conceived. The name gives it away. Memorial Reef It's built from columns and sculptures that contain the cremated remains of people who've died, thus creating a lasting legacy for their families, as well as a brand new marine habitat. By the time it's completed, the Memorial Reef will include more than 250,000 memorials. The work at the Reef Ball Foundation has also been very successful. Reef balls are made from pH balanced micro silica concrete and are treated to create a rough surface texture. They are horrible and typically have several convex concave holes of varying sizes to closely match natural reef conditions. As well as creating reefs in their own right, reef balls have also been used as breakwaters and for beach stabilisation. They have been deployed all over the planet, from the US, Mexico and Antigua, to Thailand, Indonesia and Australia. On a much smaller scale, but already having positive effects, is the Grand Ants Artificial Reef Project off Grenada. The brainchild of Phil Say at Dive Grenada garps these small pyramids constructed from concrete blocks positioned on the seabed. The whole idea of this project is that the structures are small enough to be manhandled into position relatively easily and the design offers lots of nooks and crannies for marine life to hide in. 40 of the pyramids are on the bottom so far, with more being added all the time. Sadly, not all artificial reef projects are a success. Over the years, governments and non-profit organisations which specialise in sinking artificial reefs have really zeroed in on what works and what doesn't as the basis for an artificial reef but occasionally there's still the odd one which ends in disaster. Take Osborne Reef off Fort Lauderdale in Florida. It was originally constructed from concrete jacks, but an expansion plan decided to use old car tyres as the basis for the reef. This might have sounded a good idea in principle. Take something no longer a used topside and repurpose it underwater. Unfortunately, it failed dismally. 
Have you ever dived somewhere with sunken vehicles? Take car pile, for instance, off the coast of Curacao. Here, dozens of old cars were dumped by the owners on a beach. And when the swanky new hotel was due to be built, they wanted a nice clean beach. So they simply shoved all the cars into the sea, where they tumbled to various depths down a steep rock wall. It's a very interesting dive. The deeper you go, the older the cars get, with some of the vehicles down around the 40 to 50 meter mark being proper 1950s classics. However, while encrusting marine growth, sponges and corals have really taken a hold on the metal parts of the cars, the tyres almost look like new. The same can be said for the trucks in the holds of the Thistlegorm in Egypt, or the three Fiat cars in the Umbria off Sudan. Everything is caked in growth, apart from the rubber tyres. So, tyres are not an ideal base for marine growth. The chemical makeup of rubber tyres obviously inhibits growth. But also the very shape of car tyres doesn't help. They're relatively lightweight and thus can be moved easily by storm surge and swells, which will remove even the odd bit of marine growth hardy enough to get a hold fast. And in the case of Osborne Reef, it's acknowledged that the tyres moved around to the extent that they actually caused damage to the surrounding coral reefs. So as well as failing as an artificial reef, they actually made things worse. To compound the problem, literally millions of dollars has been allocated to remove the offending tyres. Yet so far, more than two thirds still remain on the seabed. I think you can agree that is a cataclysmic failure. Osborne Reef is not the only tyre reef out there though. There have been tyre reefs in Indonesia, Malaysia, Australia and Africa. And none of them have worked either. Thankfully, everyone appears to have learned their lessons and tyre reefs have been consigned to the history books. So what's your take on purpose-made artificial reefs? Intriguing dive sites or just clutter on the seabed? Leave your comments below and if you've got a question, fire away. Because if we can't answer it, maybe someone in our community will be able to. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our ever-growing playlist for more educational and inspirational videos. As always, stay safe. And if you're going diving, enjoy.